Aye. Tennessee Tech head coach Matt Braga, 17th year overall at Tennessee Tech's second year in his second stint. Uh, team was picked fifth. He's one of our 500, you've won over 500 career games. Just talk about your expect your, your general thoughts and, and, and expectations heading into this season. Well, you know, excited to get started like everybody. I mean, it's, uh, it's an exciting time of year outside of Christmas. This is about as good as it gets right here. So, um, what, one week away from opening day, Anxious to watch our guys play. We didn't play any fall games this year. That was by choice. Um, and so it's a very, it's a very good group. We've got 37 players, I believe 22 new guys, only 15 returners. So um, there's a lot to look forward to and see, you know, kind of where we're at and how we can improve. Last year you took over and you, when you came back, you didn't have a lot of time to prepare. You were sort of thrown into it. So what is it like to have maybe a true off season and, and do a little bit more uh, things that you wanted to this, this year? Well, Kyle, there is something to that. I mean, because every coach does something different. It doesn't mean every coach does, you know, it doesn't mean it's better than what someone else did. It's just different. And so when you come in uh, and I've done it twice here, my first go around, I came in in November, December, um, back in 03, uh, and then this time in, in last year, I came in in November, December, so didn't have a fall season. And so every coach has a system. Every coach has a way they do things, a philosophy, so to say. And so um, it's been really nice to have a full year. Um, and now some of these guys, 15 returners, have been around me a year and a half and have a little better idea of kind of how we like to do things and, and you know, what our system actually is. So, so that's been great. And I think that's, that is advantageous. So there's three new teams this year. There's the transfer portal where you get all these new players. What are your thoughts? Like, how do you expect the league to be and how do you prepare, you know, to face some people you've never faced before? Well, a couple of things on that, like we played little rock multiple times. So, so I know coach Curry really well. Uh, we went there for a three game set back in like 2016. They came to us in 2018 uh, for a three game set. So very quite familiar with their program and he does a great job. It's a good program. Um, Southern Indiana is, as, as we all know, has won a couple national championships at the D2 level. Um, that's a tall task for anybody at any level. And then, you know, Lindenwood, I mean, it's a program that you know, looking at what they've done and what the facilities they have, it's going to be a good program. I was an assistant, Kyle, at an NAI school back in 2001, Birmingham Southern, and we transitioned transition to Division I in the two, for the 2002 season. And so um, if there's anybody out there that kind of understands that transition and, and uh, that type of thing and what it can look like, you know, I, I definitely understand the transition. And um, listen, we, we, we had a good transition back in those days, and I'm sure they will as well. So what, what would you say one strength of your team will be this year? Oh, that's, that's a great question. I, I think, you know, um, probably as much as any time offensive depth, I, I feel like we're, we're very deep offensively. You know, again, we haven't played a game yet, so I'll be able to answer this question better in about three months. But I, I really do. I like the depth of our club offensively. I think on the mound, um, I think depth as well. Um, and, and so I wish we were, you know, maybe always, I think every coach in the country would say this, you know, you wish you were 12 deep on the mound. Right now, I don't think we're 12 deep on the mound, but, it, but it's definitely deeper than we were last year. And that's not a knock on last year's team by any stretch of the imagination. But, but that, that, that is probably what I would say. I would say depth offensively if there was one thing. When people think Matt Braga, Tennessee Tech team's offense is one. Last year, I was just looking up 114 home runs, which is a lot more than the year before you came back. Do we expect to still see that? Some, a lot of pop in the bats. You, you said offense, but, you know, home runs. Yeah, you know, um, I think this team's a little different. I do. I think this team is a little bit different than last year's team. Um, I think this team's a little more athletic. I think the bat-to-ball skills are a little better. Maybe the swing and miss is better this year. Um, that power, I mean, it's hard to replace a Jason Hinchman who had 27 home runs. You know, that's a tough, that's a tough task. And then we had some other guys with 15, 14, and 10 or something like that that we lost. And so those are tall tasks when trying to replace those offensive numbers. Um, but in a different way, I, I think hopefully more than anything, our program has been 
known for scoring runs. And I think that this team has a chance, and I say a chance because we haven't played a game yet, but has a chance to be pretty special offensively and should be able to put up runs. You talked about some of your return players, but you know, the, the portal has changed some. You've lost some people you thought you probably have, but have you been able to, you know, use that to your advantage and get some players in who are going to make impacts that, as I mentioned earlier, nobody knows about yet. There are these players that are on your team. Yeah, you know, it's a great question. Um, we have so oftentimes, like when you're coming back this year and we, we lost a lot of home runs, you just, you know, kind of didn't say it, but could allude to it. And uh, a lot of offensive production, some, some pitching production. But one great thing is we're able to focus on who we do have. And, and I love the guys we have. And yes, we lost, you know, it's kind of funny, uh, kind of awesome in a way, uh, two young men that are projected starters at Alabama were here last year. A uh, young man that was our third baseman last year is now at Southern Miss and projected to start at second base for them. And I'm proud of them. That's great. If that's what they wanted, I didn't know those young men that well, but um, in a short time, I got to know them great and they're super young men. And if that's what they wanted, I'm all for it. Um, and yes, to the opposite end of the spectrum, one young man that pops to mind really quick is Peyton Mills. He's a transfer from Charleston Southern. Um, he played a lot for them last year, hit over 300, had maybe six or seven home runs for them. And um, he's going to be an instant impact for us. So, yeah, we've been able to, we have a young man on the mound, Tyler Zarella um, from Houston Baptist. I, I, I knew him from my time in, in Houston. And um, he's, he's going to be an impact for us. So it kind of what you give and take away, right? It, it kind of works both ways and just learning to deal with it. One more thing on this, Kyle, last year going into the season, like I knew we had three young men that were leaving. They came to me like one of the first times I ever met with them. Hey coach, just want you to know I'm, I'm graduating and I'm planning on leaving at the end of the year. I told our guys this year, I don't want to know. Like, like, and maybe that hurts us. Maybe that'll hurt us in recruiting for next year's group. You know, because we don't have the head start, so to say. But man, I don't want to know. I don't want to know that, hey, our starting whatever position is leaving. Let's talk. Let's build a great relationship. And then you know, we'll get a feel as the year goes on. Well, let's talk about your schedule. You never shy away. You beat Tennessee last year. You know, you always play Vanderbilt. So uh, what about your non-conference this year? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a great, um, great non-conference schedule. I, I wish we had more home games, all, in all honesty. You know, when you come in uh, in the November, December time frame, the schedule, a lot of it is kind of made. You're able to move things around a little bit. But um, I think we're only at home like 24 games this year, which is an oddity for us. We're typically around the 30, 31 mark. So I wish we had a few more home games. But, but our guys are excited to go on the road. That's kind of a, kind of a treat, honestly. Um, good, really good schedule. Uh, we open up, up at home with Bowling Green here next Friday. Excited about that. Uh, then we go to midweek to Alabama. That's my wife's alma mater. I got my master's from there, so excited to go back down to Tuscaloosa. Um, we play Georgia Tech, then the next second weekend of the regular season, obviously at their place, so that'll be fun. We got Vanderbilt. We got my alma mater, Kentucky. So get to go back to Kentucky. Got number one ranked. Well, I don't know where they're ranked this year, but Tennessee. So it's a really challenging slate for our guys. And that's just to mention those schools. I mean, we've got Davidson on the road. Davidson's picked to win the, you know, Atlantic 10. And so um, that'll be a challenge. And other, some other really good programs on the schedule non-conference that we're excited about playing. Well, Coach, thanks for your time this morning. And uh, best of luck this season to you and the Golden Eagles. Thank you so much, Kyle. Appreciate you doing this, man.